guys, I was able to work out my tanks last night and they were looking really good this morning, so I figured why not do another apartment walkthrough? Say hi, Oliver. This is my largest planted tank. It's a 29 gallon. As you can tell, it's really overgrown. I should probably trim it back some. I've got my Anubis forest back here and all of my swords. Lately, I've kind of been a fan of the uh, crazy jungle look. Um, you can see that I have a really thick layer of duckweed on the top. Uh, the reason for that is this is a Phoenix Planet Plus. It's a really powerful light and I should really honestly probably be running CO2 on this system. Um, and something else that I do with all of my uh, filters is I like to add live plants to them. So taking a little bit of aquaponics inspiration uh, really helps with water quality, low lowers nitrate levels, and it looks cool. This is one of my rescue leopard geckos, Jasmine. Uh, she was found in the middle of PetSmart underneath a pallet when I worked there and her options were to either live at PetSmart the rest of her life or come live with me so of course I took her. Um, being in a one bedroom apartment I'm really limited on space so I decided to work up. Uh, I use ZooMed excavator clay. And each one of these holes is an entrance to a tunnel to another hide. And uh, this actually more so uh, naturally recreates her uh, natural environment. Uh, living in the Middle East, she would be living in lots of burrows and tunnels. So uh, I really like this tank. It's really cool. This is my hermit crab tank. I've had several of these guys for upwards of a decade. Yes. They do live that long, given proper care. Uh, you can see how much substrate I have in this tank, and the reason for that is because just like snakes and geckos and bearded dragons, they shed their skin too, except it's a process called molting, and they dig all the way into the substrate until it's all the way dark, and they shed their skin. Um, this tank really, uh, I needs it's probably the next on my list to work on uh, you can see all of their shells back here this is their shell station and I provide plenty of cover because when they're changing shells they know that they're really vulnerable to attack so I like to be sure to give them lots of privacy uh, it them being nocturnal animals and it's the daytime right now they are uh, none of them are out unfortunately but you can always check out my page if you want to see some pictures of them. They're huge. This is Raja, my ball pythons tank. Him and Lilo, my gargoyle gecko, are my two animals that are not rescues. Everyone else is. Uh, his tank being the dimensions that it is, I also had to work up. I had to work with the space that I was given. So uh, it's a little difficult to see, but this is actually a really big tunnel system. So he's got a hide here, a hide here. This is all a hide. He's got one here. Um, he's got two under tank heaters on this side. Uh, so he's got lots of different temperature gradients to choose from. Uh, him being nocturnal, he is hiding right now, but I really like this tank. Uh, it's very difficult to, uh, to work with the dimensions that it is, and he is really destructive. So I have to be sure, you know, to be 100% careful what I'm putting in there. And I think I've done a really good job with it. This is Nala, my bearded dragon. Uh, she was a rescue as well. I love her tank. Um, I am really big into using materials that I found outside. And of course, after cleaning them and bleaching them, of course, and letting them dry out, 
Uh, a lot of people will say that bearded dragons don't like to climb, but in my experience, that actually hasn't been true. Uh, the majority of the time, she is up here um, on her branches. She doesn't like to go down onto the bottom very much. When she's brewmating, she will, but thankfully now that winter is over, she's been super active. This is PJ, my blind leopard gecko setup. He was a rescue. He's a really cute little guy. You can see him in the back there. If you look at his tank, you can see everything is really low to the ground. Very simple. You can see his uh, food dish there, too. He uh, only eats in that food dish. I have to disable his prey before I feed it to him, but he does a really good job. I've had him for several years now, and it's really been a joy watching him calm down. This is my gargoyle gecko Lilo setup. As you can tell, there are a lot of live plants. I'm a huge pro proponent of making tanks as natural as possible. She's in this uh, mason jar back here hiding. Unfortunately, I can't get a good shot of her. But you can see she has a lot of different heights to choose from. Her tank is probably my next one, uh, her and the hermit crab tank, on getting redone. As she's getting bigger, I probably need to add bigger branches, maybe some cork in there, just to give her a little bit more variety in climbing. This pothos is really strong, and I always catch her at night climbing all over it. She's actually very destructive. Um, you can see she tears her moss down. She really uh, likes to explore. This is the Firebelly Toad Tank. This tank also is all live plants. Let me see if I can, can see them back here. They're really cool little guys. I am absolutely in love with this tank. I really love the aesthetic of it. It so closely recreates their natural environment. I've got some duckweed in there to give them some cover. And you can see just how much the plants have grown. I trimmed them back a few days ago, believe it or not. This is my Southeast Asian tank with my rasboras and my white clouds. I just recently redid this tank. I'm really happy with the results. You can see I also have pothos growing in the filter. I really like the aesthetic of this tank as well. I really like the coloring. It's very peaceful and zen with the Buddha in the corner.